Hi, I'm from Meant To Be Designs and I'm so happy to be here today. At Meant To Be Designs, we specialize in custom pieces as well as teaching others how to use their own Glowforge and to make their own special pieces as well. Today, I'm going to be using my own family picture and I'm going to be transferring this over to create this, our own keychain. So if you're ready to create your own, come follow me and we'll walk you through all of the steps on how to make your own family keychain. Here are the tools and the materials that I'll be using for this project. Medium maple plywood from the Glowforge shop. My own iPad as well as my iPad pencil. My trusty old plastic razor, this plastic keychain as well as this jump ring to make our keychain. Um, let's go over to our iPad and I'll walk you through how I use Procreate to make that drawing of my family portrait. All right, so we're going to open up the app called Procreate. Um, you can find it on the app store. We're gonna open up Procreate and we're going to start off by creating our own canvas. So to create our own canvas, we'll create on this top uh, plus sign on the top right corner and press on that plus sign again. We're going to customize the dimensions to three and a half inches uh, by three and a half inches. That's essentially the size of our keychain, and so I wanna make sure that what I'm drawing um, stays within this size. So once we have our canvas, I'm going to uh, press on the wrench tool, add, and we're going to insert our photo. You could use these blue dots on the corners and the sides of the photo to make some adjustments. So, you know, if you want to zoom in or zoom out, you can always do that. And once you're satisfied with your drawing, we can click on the layers tab and we're going to click on N on that family portrait layer. We'll reduce the opacity down to probably about 47%. And then we're going to add a new layer on top. What this does is it allows us to have a a reference on the first layer, but it also has another layer on top of this so that we can make all the drawings and adjustments and not alter or make any alterations to the first layer. So for the brush, we're going to use one called Script. It's under calligraphy. We'll be using the color black for this tutorial and our size of our brush is going to be 5%. You'll be able to notice that depending on how hard or soft you press down on your pencil will determine the width of that drawing mark. So make sure to control that. If you don't really care to have that little bit of movement and you want all of the lines to be the same, you can also use the one called monoline. If you want to undo your most previous drawing, all you need to do is tap the screen with two fingers and that drawing will go away. So I'm zooming in using two fingers uh, so that I could have an easier control of the drawing that I'm doing. And I'm going to begin drawing my photo. So the beauty of having these portraits drawn is that you can make adjustments to um, to them. So, you know, if someone's hair or someone wasn't having a good hair day, you could fix that for them. Or if, um, you know, someone's facing the wrong direction, you could also fix that for them. So here um, is an example of where I'm making adjustments to uh, her neckline um, so that the dress looks more put together. I've had um, a drawing done where during the holiday season, you know, someone's having a baby over Christmas break, but you know, the baby won't be here in time for a new photo. So they just asked if we could add a baby for them. We've done a number of those where we've added a newborn into the drawing, typically in someone's arms. You could use the eraser tool to remove any um, lines that you're not really happy with if it wasn't the most recent one. And then with ponytails, I like to just draw it in. That way <laughs> it looks like it's full. And then I'm also just going to put in 
a neck because you won't be able to see that and it'll look weird. Um, you know, you can always go back and forth by toggling and turning on and off this uh, check mark box on your layer just to see uh, you know what's missing so here we see that we haven't finished the face or you know you could see what things look like and turn it back on so that you could go back and finish it uh, here's my photo I think I like how it looks I'm going to now transfer this over to our desktop so we could use Adobe Illustrator so we're going to press on the wrench tool we'll click on share and we're going to share this file as a JPEG over to our desktop now that we've hopped into Adobe Illustrator we're going to be transferring this image over to something that the Glowforge could recognize and engrave press on image trace and for this tutorial, we're just going to stick with the three colors. Something to note is that the background, which is white, is considered also a color in Illustrator. So that's why I start there. That looks pretty good. So we're now going to click on the view settings and I like to go with the outlines and I'll click on expand. So now that all of our lines have been traced or outlined, I'm going to be using this wand tool to remove all of the white portion of this drawing. Click on any of the white area with this wand tool and I'm going to be pressing delete on my keyboard. All of the white portion is gone and all we have remaining is this black outline of the image that we drew in Procreate. So the next thing that we want to do is create a border around our image that we want to tell Glowforge to cut. If you wanted to keep it simple, you could just make a circle that the Glowforge cuts that way you don't have to you know do any of the outline or anything like that but um, for this tutorial we'll go ahead and do a tracing of the image I personally like doing that it makes it a little bit more custom looking I prefer to have my image be around like a 2.5 mark in width I'll just go ahead and jump here and go 2.5 inches and I'm going to go here to this little paintbrush tool icon I clicked on the bottom corner of that and I'm going to be using the blob brush tool we'll jump over to the layers and I'm going to press on the plus sign to create a new layer I'm going to now start drawing an outline over our image what I'm going to do now is click on this direct selection tool and I'm going to press on the inner lines of this drawing or this blob that we did and what I'm going to do is press on delete so that the inner lines are removed and now we just have this big gigantic blob um, ideally if I just move the layer underneath that drawing we'll be able to see what it looks like so from here I'm actually going to be creating the little circle part of where our keychain is going to be linked. I found that the 0.2 by 0.2 inches is a pretty good circle width for your keychain hole. I'm going to make the outline blue and the inner part the fill to be none. I also need to create an additional circle. I'm going to make that 0.4 by 0.4 inches. And so I went ahead and used the align tool to adjust the two circles together. And I'm going to place this about the center of my keychain blob. Click on the blob plus the outer 0.4 circle. And I'm going to use the Pathfinder Unite tool to uh, merge those two pieces together. The blue portion or the blue outer layer is what our Glowforge is going to be cutting. The inner portion is engraved. So now that we're ready, we're going to go ahead and save this as an SVG file and we'll hop over to Glowforge, the Glowforge website to get this engraved and cut. Now that we've uploaded our image into Glowforge, I'm going to be using the maple plywood settings for my material and using the engraved settings of 700 with full power speed. I'm also going to be using the proof grade cut settings for the cut. Now that we're ready, I press that print button and we're going to head over to our Glowforge to press our magic button.
In order to make our keychain, we're going to be using plastic keychain rings as well as a jump ring and you can even go fancy with these claw rings also. We're going to be peeling off the masking that's on this. I like to use this plastic razor but you can always just use your fingertips. Nails, you could use the nails to just peel. Look how pretty that looks. So I'm going to be using these plastic keychain rings. So all you do is place it in that little hole and then we'll push the key ring around that and all you do is seal it shut and then you are done. I also like to add a little bit of accessories so I'm going to put this little clamp onto our key ring also. If you have a tassel or um, anything like that, you can also put that on your keychain too. Um, but here you go. This is our keychain finished product. How pretty is that? Well, that was it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to create your own family portrait keychain. Uh, if you have any questions or comments related to this tutorial, make sure to leave those comments down below. Also, let us know if there's anything else that you'd like to learn to create with your Glowforge. Again, my name is Audrey. I'm from Into Be Designs and I hope you enjoy. Bye.